You guys remember that video we did a while back when we compared the Toyota 4Runner against the Jeep Wrangler to see if one is better than the other if you guys were looking to buy one or the other? Well, that video ended up being the reason as to why I ended up with this thing. I always knew that eventually at some point I was gonna buy an upgraded vehicle that was more off-road capable than what I previously had, which was the Toyota Highlander all-wheel drive. And I did have that set up pretty good for overlanding and things like that. But as far as pure off-road capabilities, I knew I wanted either a Jeep Wrangler or a Toyota, either the Tacoma or the 4Runner, but I was actually leaning more towards the 4Runner. Well, that's for all of you that may be out there looking for some kind of more capable off-road vehicle. When I did the research on the Jeep Wranglers, I found that right now they're just a little too pricey um, and we're out of my budget, where as this one, now I did get lucky, but it was after a lot of time of searching that I ended up finding this 2007 4Runner that's the limited edition with the 4.7 liter V8, which I'm pretty excited about because you don't see a lot of these in really good condition for a really good price either. So that's for you guys if you are looking for something like that. It just takes some time. Does You gotta do a lot of research and maybe um, like how I ended up with this one, it ended up being just a friend of mine at work who knew a guy who actually ended up having this and that's how we connected and after some back and forth um, ended up with this. So it was all contingent on selling the Highlander first, which actually it all worked out so smoothly it was actually kind of scary. The Highlander was sold right away and this was in my driveway within a few days. In that short time frame, I did some more research on the 4.7 liter V8 4Runners and found out that that is Toyota's or one of Toyota's actually best produced, more re most reliable engine that they ever put out. It's got an iron block on it so it's basically bulletproof and these engines just go forever. So it's a dual overhead cam system V8 and guys, this is crazy. I was a little nervous about the V8 because right now gas prices are absolutely ridiculous. So uh, that was one of the things that I wanted to do the most research on. But with this one being pretty decently modified, it already has the Doug Thorley long tube headers on it. The front cat deletes, has some other goodies that we'll go through with you guys in a bit. But the fuel mileage on this thing, even with the 295 70 17s that are on here now, and their mud terrains, I'm getting at 15.3 miles to the gallon. And I thought that was actually uh, incredible and completely surprising because even with the Highlander, I was only averaging just over 16 and a half miles per gallon. So, but to go from something like that to something like this, that's a lot more off-road capable for what it is, definitely worth that little bit of sacrifice. But this is the 2007 model. So this is what's considered as uh, Toyota's 4Runner 4th Gen. So 4th Gens ran from and I hope I don't screw this up, it was 2001 till 2009, which the limited or the sport versions did offer the 4.7 liter V8. And honestly, I don't know if that was the entire period through 2001 to, to through 2009, but at least 2007 for sure on limits had the 4.7 liter V8, which these are pushing around believe 260 horsepower or so if I'm getting my numbers right and just a little bit more than that even in foot pounds of torque. So definitely a desirable engine, not only because it's bulletproof, but it's got plenty of power to get up and go, especially if you upfit it with roof rack, bigger tires without re-gearing, uh, rear tire, spare tire carrier, at rock sliders and all the extra goodies that you're gonna be hauling in it or even hauling behind it. In fact, these fourth gen four runners with the V8 are rated at a towing capacity of 7,000 pounds, which is absolutely incredible. So they are definitely powerhouses and plenty capable to do pretty much whatever you want to do with it. Plus they have a huge uh, aftermarket support for these fourth gen four runners. And guys, plus they have a huge amount of aftermarket support following on these fourth gen four runners as well. So if you're looking to upfit them, you can pretty much find almost anything you're looking for. In fact, another reason that kind of persuaded me to this direction over the Jeep Wrangler was the fact that uh, we just started carrying on trail built the Overland Vehicle Systems, all their overlanding gear, which is pretty exciting because they have a huge line of all different types of overlanding gear on there from anything from recovery equipment all the way to rooftop 
tents and pretty much everything in between. So that's pretty exciting if you guys are into overlanding or even if you're into camping, it's definitely worth checking out just hop on trail built off road or by clicking the link in the description below. So anyways, with all of that said, let's go ahead. Let's take a walk around this thing. And really guys, I want to take a walk through with you guys on this forerunner, just in case if you are looking to get like a fourth gen forerunner or even a fifth gen forerunner, a lot of the stuff is interchangeable. But anyways, I want to go through the upgrades with you. So that way, even if you have a fourth gen forerunner at the moment, you can see kind of some of the stuff that was done on here and maybe give you some ideas. Now I got to start with the wheels and tires because obviously for trail built, the wheels and tires are our bread and butter of the business. But this one has, like I mentioned before, the 295 70 17s on here. Now these are the general grabbers, the MTs, and these are the X3. So their latest version of the MTs from general grabber. And these things, I did have them off-road already last weekend. Again, with today, we're going to do some more off-roading air down a little bit, but I'll get into that in a second. But these things do really grab and hook really nice they are a bit noisy on the road expected for a mud terrain there's no surprise there now something i'm really excited about now we talked to icon icon was generous enough to go ahead and send us these rebound pros which can't thank them enough but we really wanted to get these because we really needed to put these to the test ourselves, which we're gonna do some more today, but also in future videos as well. The Rebound Pros, if you're not familiar with them already, they are an inner beadlock technology patented by Icon Alloys. And what that means is they've designed it to have all of these pins that get screwed in um, and go up behind the bead of the tire, preventing the bead from slipping off the bead seat at low tire pressures. It's similar to a beadlock it's except it's dot legal or dot approved in all 50 states and it's a heck of a lot lighter than an actual beadlock wheel so you don't have to worry about any of the hardware coming off or anything like that they cor they corrosion proof the heck out of these pins so you're not going to have to worry about any corrosion or anything like that either so it's just a really smart in it's really a genius way of preventing your bead from coming off the tire at low tire pressures. It kind of is an all encompassing win win situation. So I'm really excited to get these aired down and really start putting them to the test to show you guys. So that way, if you are in the market for a nice set of bead locks, really consider these icon rebound pros as your next option, because personally, I don't know if there is a better bead lock system out there that is as inexpensive as these rebound pros and work as well as what these do so and they're lightweight which is it's really a win-win situation and guys since we're speaking of icon well it has the stage five icon vehicle dynamic suspension in it as well which is super exciting and another Big reason why I wanted to go with this is because it's, it's already equipped with pretty much everything I would need to go off-roading. Obviously, I'm going to upfit it with some other things as well, but the Icon Vehicle Dynamic Suspension that's on here has the CDCV valving on the remote resis, which just means you can adjust the firmness of the dampening of the shock anywhere from a soft setting, a one through nine, and then a hard setting, depending on the type of off-roading that you're doing. And today, I've already stopped at the trailhead. I've adjusted all the valves down to the softest setting. So that way we can really get the suspension articulating to the max capabilities of the suspension with these Icon shocks. Not only does it have the Icon shocks, it also has the Icon springs in it as well in the rear. So the fronts are going to be your coilovers, the backs are going to be springs and then um, shocks besides that. So shocking, right? And guys, Obviously, if you're overlanding, you got to have lights, right? You got to be able to see at night, not only in front of you, but around you. Now, I don't have any lights on here to see around me just yet, but I do have lights to see in front of me, which these are the Morimoto. These are going to be the four bangers. I actually just put these on last night, wired them up and everything. But these things are super bright. Not only are they super bright, but they're also dual purpose. They give you flood and spot all in one. So four bangers, those you can also find on trail belt as well. But I had to take this thing for a spin last night just to see how well they lit up the ditches because I kind of have them pointed sort of at the ditches. And well, they worked because I ended up seeing a couple of deer and two skunks. All right, guys, so moving around the side of the vehicle, these are the white knuckle off-road rock sliders. Pretty cool because they are finished on top with the diamond plate. 
So I don't know, it just helps give you a little extra traction while you're taking a step on it. And it doesn't have this little bump out too, which is nice for when you get up real tight next to a rock or a tree, it will actually help kind of push you away from that tree, especially one that might be hitting the top of your forerunner. Now, now up here, this is pretty cool too. I was pretty excited about this. Not only does it have the 30 some inch light bar in the front for some extra visibility at night, but this also has the Gamma Viti uh, full roof rack on it, which is pretty cool. And the plan is to not run a rooftop tent, not on top of the forerunner. Anyway, I have some different thoughts and plans for what I'm gonna do with that and that we can get into at a later video, but it is nice to have in case you have to haul some cargo or gear, or if you do like the rooftop tents, these Gamma VDs are pretty solid. They're reinforced in all the corners, powder coated. Um, this one has the four different mounting points on it, but I believe they offer options for more mounting points. You'd have to check them out, but really like this rack. And not only that, but it looks pretty cool too. One thing that Gamma VD roof rag did give me as a mounting point for the WeBoost system. If you guys are interested in how the WeBoost system works for mobile reception in remote areas, I can tell you it works pretty good. You have to have reception in that area, whereas before my other cell phone carrier, before I just switched over, didn't have reception barely anywhere. Um, even with the WeBoost, it was difficult to get that reception, but it was a lot better having this than not having it. So it does really help. And it, I think it is worth the extra money to get the WeBoost. So that's a pretty cool system. We don't carry those, I wish we did, but you can check them out anyways. Also very important to have on your off-road vehicle is a way to recover it in case you get stuck, which is nice with this 4Runner. It came with the CBI off-road rear bumper and tire carrier. Um, I really like it. It's pretty beefy, pretty solid, and has multiple um, tow points to it, the two clevis um, hookups there, and then also I have my recovery receiver hitch in there as well. And I'm pretty excited because I got to finally mount my high lift jack again on an off-road vehicle. I think it's been in my scout for the last couple of years, which uh, kind of a shame to admit. But anyways, I got it back out again. Hopefully never have to use it. Something that I'm really excited about, and I'm, I don't know why, if I'm getting older, what the case is, but probably one of the most exciting features that this 4Runner came with and sort of a, a decision maker on whether to finally pull the trigger or not is this super awesome Iceco refrigerator. Now this thing is pretty sweet. I've never had a refrigerator in my vehicle before, um, but it, uh, it comes in really handy, even a lot more handy than what I thought. So I've literally just been packing my lunch in here every single day and I come out to the Forerunner, I grab my sandwich meat out, I got some bread in here, um, drinks, pickles, mayo, I got cheese in here, I've got a bunch of different um, granola bars in here to snack on throughout the day when I get hungry and it is, it's freaking awesome. So yeah, basically I just told my wife that I bought a really expensive refrigerator but super awesome to have one of these comes in really handy and is really convenient now we don't have this particular model this one's an ice co but we do have rough country refrigerators on the website and we also have the overland vehicle systems tray with slide out so you can definitely check that out if this is something you guys are interested in getting i know i sure love it i think it's pretty awesome and not only do I have a place to keep my food cool, but I also have some additional storage to hang some tools on. Like right now I just have my hatchet, my shovel, my tripod for the camera, and over here I have the uh, recovery strap, and then some additional storage up here because in the Forerunner there isn't any in-floor storage like there was on the Highlander, which is fine because these Molly panels on the side here are super awesome to have. All right guys, now I know I already mentioned it, but I can't get over the fact that it has a 4.7 liter V8, which is pretty exciting. Now, this one is the 2UZ model or line of engines from Toyota and is really revered to as one of the most reliable engines that Toyota ever made. So this same engine was in the Lexus, like the GX 470 and I believe 460, don't 
quote me on that. But anyways, it's got around that 260 horsepower and about the same right around there in foot pounds of torque, plenty of power. Obviously with some upgrades, you can get some more power, even more power out of it. Um, I do have future plans for um, doing the exhaust on it. It does have the Doug Thorley long tube headers on it already, but I do want to get an aftermarket um, exhaust system for it. Not sure, maybe a Flowmaster, like a 40 series or something like that. Maybe just do a uh, muffler replacement. I'm not sure yet. Definitely a uh, highly revered engine, uh, highly coveted engine, but this also being that it is a limited with the V8 does have the full-time four-wheel drive system in it with a four low transfer case that has another traction modifier called a center diff lock, which has been absolutely incredible. I've used it now a couple of times. That center diff lock almost makes it uh, uh, seem like it has front and rear lockers is probably the best way I can explain it. But even some of the off-roading I've done last weekend, we didn't spin a tire not one time and it was muddy and a little bit rocky and uh, pretty crazy. So we are gonna put it a little bit more to the test today. Um, get some more footage on the traction capabilities of the 4Runner and of the general grabber tires. And then also we we'll wanna do some more testing on the Icon Rebound Pros that we're gonna show you guys in a later video. So with all of that said, guys, we really wanted to do this video, not just to show you my 4Runner or anything like that, but I wanted to give you guys some ideas if you are looking for that off-road capable vehicle. Uh, fourth gen 4Runner is definitely a great way to go. I know their pricing is a little inflated right now too. Same with Tacomas, um, definitely with Jeep Wranglers. I shop Jeep Wranglers first. I'm not touching those things for, you know, it's too many miles for too much price. So the next best option that I sort of got lucky for, but it's taken me a long time. This is years in the making, literally, looking for that right sort of unicorn vehicle that's already halfway built up that I can still modify and has been really well taken care of like this one has, has all of the records for it, all that good stuff. But anyways, you can get lucky. You can find those vehicles out there. If you do already have a 4Runner or even a Jeep Wrangler, um, definitely make sure to check out our website, Trailblit, look at the Overland Vehicle Systems and all the other stuff that we got for you guys because there's a whole bunch of options on there as well. But hopefully this video had given you some ideas as to maybe how to modify your current vehicle as well. Either way, guys, we definitely want to hear back from you, though. What vehicles are you looking at? Do you have a vehicle now that you're interested in building up? Do you have a fourth gen 4Runner? How do you like it? Be great to hear from all of you guys by letting us know in the comments below. And guys, well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up and we're going to go hit the trails, test out the Icon Rebound Pros. And guys, as always, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trailbuilt and we'll see you guys out on the trails.